Son Rory. Coach, <laughs> it opens in. Uh, yep. Uh, green smoothies are sticky, and it's awesome. Um, it's a tremendous job by yeah, these yeah. young men. <laughs> it's a, a first-class bowl. A great opportunity, a great Hi, reward Ryan. for our kids. And um, a, a tremendous evening by our kids in the resiliency and the amount of work that they've put in to have a special night like this, to be able to score 51 points offensively, defense to get huge turnovers in this day and age of, of college football and, and with the talent that they have on the offensive side of the ball, the turnovers that were generated, big plays that were made, you know, huge, huge plays by key kids stepping up, and that's what this is all about. It's about the kids. It's about them showing up and performing on their day, which is game day, and uh, balling out in the all gold. So really proud of our kids, really proud of our family, our Flash Fast family, and excited to continue to build this thing going forward. It's just the beginning for Flash Fast football and where Kent State's going. All right, we'll open it up to questions. We do have a microphone that we'd like to pass around, and please identify yourself because we are rolling on this. Jared Taylor, KTR 88.9 FM. So, Coach, first, congratulations. How does this feel to get the first bowl win in school history? But also, how did the seniors feel accomplishing something so special? I mean, it's, it's truly a special evening. Um, feels great for the kids. You know, again, in the two years, obviously tonight's a culmination of two years of hard work. And a lot of kids, you know, they, they could have ran, especially when a new staff comes in and they could have jumped in the portal and done different things. And, and these guys, you know, uh, battled through adversity. And, and to get to this point and, and to leave their legacy, leave this mark, you know, we talk all the time at the beginning of the year that, that each, each year the, the family's going to define who it is, what characteristics they're going to be. And I'll tell you what, this is a group that, that fights together. They, they pull tight when things get hard. They showed that tonight. And, um, man, do they finish strong. You know, finish this game strong the right way, finish the season strong the right way. And uh, there's going to be a banner going up. There's a championship trophy coming home. There'll be rings on their fingers, which is a pretty cool season to have. Coach, um, Alex Fehar with the Salt Lake Tribune. The game was pretty close all the way throughout until maybe the final few minutes of the fourth quarter. What do you think ultimately um, decided the game? I think players making plays. That's what the game always comes down to. You know, key plays made by key players. Um, you know, Chrome obviously pulling that thing, making the proper read, you know, to, to get the touchdown to kind of ice it. But even before then, Jamal with a really headsy play on the squib to, to be a ball player, you know, and to know that we got confidence in him to be in that position, to fade back, reco recover that thing, and, and to stick his foot in the ground and go the other way. You know, it, it's about kids making plays and, and, and us just being smart enough to put them in the right position and not making a simple game too complicated and letting them go play. And they did that tonight, and that's really cool to see. Quinn Lowe, Sports Q&A. Coach, can you talk about the resiliency of the program while you guys were sitting at three and six, you were able to go on the three game winning streak to get to this point, and then tonight just showing everyone what MAC football is about? Yeah, I mean, that's what Northeast Ohio is all about. We're, we're going to be built from the state of Ohio. We're going to go out. And uh, I, I tell you what, you come to Northeast Ohio, anyone that's familiar with Northeast Ohio, there's true grit, there's true toughness. These kids embodied that. And, and any time that we can embody our community and represent our community the way that we did tonight, and represent our conference. You know, there's been some narratives all this season long about MAC football. I believe right now, with two bowl games in, we 2-0. and So we did our part. We played really, really good football in the MAC, and it's more than just matching on Tuesday or Thursday night. These kids work, they compete, and this is high caliber football that we showed tonight. Coach, James Tagman, to Reddit College Football, third play of the game. You went vertical to Isaiah McCoy, 78-yard touchdown pass. Was that a play that was scripted to take advantage of a mismatch, or was that a case of Dustin seeing a read, an opportunity, and taking advantage of it? Uh, again, it's, it's more players making plays. You know, we like fast guys that run fast. Zay's one of those guys. He got on top, made a play. He's done that all year long. He's one of our most explosive kids. Um, so, you know, it, it, again, it's just kids making plays, following their rules, doing what they're coached to do, and us stepping back, being outside the white lines, and letting our kids go, go be themselves and play with confidence and play loose on game day. Mitch Myers. KentWire.com, uh, Antoine, talk about your journey where you were coming in as a freshman under the other coaching group and where you are now. Uh, coming in, um, I'm pretty sure everybody said this on their visit, that they want to come, come to uh, Kent State and change it. I mean, um, it's a big difference from when Coach Lewis came in and the last coaches. Um, not saying that they weren't great coaches, but uh, just the way that Coach Lewis pushes us to a limit that we think we can't get to and we, we can actually get to it. Um, I mean, that's, that's what this program is about. Um, and uh, I know Dustin is uh, proud of himself and I'm proud of myself for coming here and, and sticking with it 
even when we, we went through all those losing seasons. Um, and all I can say is we changed the culture. And then, Dustin, I saw you had quite a few moments on the sideline before the clock hit all zeros with your teammates. Kind of walk us through what they meant to you and what you said there. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's what it's all about. I mean, it wasn't <coughs> any individual effort. I mean, it was, a, it was a group thing. I mean, it was big plays by different guys at different times in all three phases that kind of got it done for us. I mean, even down to the last touchdown play, I mean, that's, that's going against scout defensive ends that gave me good looks all year, trying to mess with me and giving me hard reads and things like that. I mean, so, I mean, it's everyone. It's not just one guy. And it's the kind of, the, like Duke says, the culture we've kind of started to build. And it's just been a really fun experience. And I couldn't be happier. Uh, Ian Kreider, KentWire.com. Dustin, what was going through your mind on that fourth and one call from when coach called it to when you got in the end zone? Uh, I mean, you got to get it. Um, but, uh, no, I mean, I just read it out like a normal play. I mean, you can't try to do too much any time. The defensive end crashed, so I pulled it. I mean, it's obviously a day one to read, day one install type play and things like that. And I know – the guys trusted me, and that's why and Coach trusted the offense. And so that's why he gave us, uh, put the ball in our hands. And Dalka did a good job sealing out. And I knew I just had to stick my foot in the ground, try to get north, and then ended up in the end zone. You mentioned he trusted you with the ball in your hands in that position. I mean, you could have just, just as easily kicked the field goal and gone up six and just trusted the defense to make a stop. What, I mean, what does that say with, with your relationship with Coach and how, I guess, it's progressed throughout yeah. the season? Uh, I mean, it just shows that he trusts the offense and things like that. But I mean, co I mean, you know, coach, he's an aggressive play caller, and we're gonna uh, get after guys and try to threaten defenses, and that's really just our style of play. Now, coach, you have two offensive players up there, but can you talk about how great your defensive play and, and it was the catalyst for a lot of the big plays offensively? Yeah, I mean, for sure. I mean, they, they were very opportunistic when when the ball presented itself to generate the turnovers that they did to, to constantly apply pressure, you know, the way that they did to a very, very good quarterback. Um, you know, it, it doesn't probably show up in the stat sheet with the number of hits or, or sacks, but, you know, I, I thought our front did a great job of, of pressuring them relentlessly, you know, kind of moved them off his spots on a consistent basis and uh, did an excellent job really consistently stopping the run, which was something that, you know, had been a struggle for us throughout the course of the year. But our kids, again, we, we are very open, very direct, very honest with them, give them that feedback. And uh, they responded in a big time manner on a big time stage uh, to show up and perform when we needed them to and, and get the critical stops that they needed to tonight. Coach Lewis, uh, Ben Pagani, TV2. I have, a, I have to wonder, this is the first bowl game victory in school history. The team has been coming to bowl games. This is the fourth since the 1950s. When you look back, <coughs> Um, someday on this team, what is going to be the main thing that sticks out to you about the resilient <laughs> resilience of this team uh, and how they came back from being three and six at one point in the season to now being Frisco Bowl champions? The thing that jumps out to me uh, about these guys is they're just tremendous belief in one another and and what we're asking them to do. You know, I, I think. At any point in time, you gotta you gotta fail before you can succeed. And I think a lot of people, when they fail, they quit. And these kids didn't quit. They got a resiliency. They got a grit about them. They believe in one another. They believe in themselves. You know, so whether it's it's getting off the field on fourth down defensively, whether it's it's making a play on special teams, and it's uh, you know getting to the opportunity to where um, you know we're at that fourth and one, and the kids are looking at me, the belief in themselves to get that one yard, and, and the belief that we have in them as a staff. It's that belief, it's that, it's that connection, it's the love that they have for one another. We talk about a flash fast family, and um, it ain't no fancy acronym. It, it's just, you know, it's a connection between brothers, and, and they'll be connected from now, you know, wherever they go. We're, we're going to get back home, and guys are going to scatter, like Coach Anderson was talking about when we were at this press conference, and, you know, it's kind of it's going to happen in a hurry. Guys are going to start their lives, and, and that locker room, this team will, will never be the same. Um, when we come back from winter break, it'll be different. But for right now, we're going to cherish this moment. We're going to cherish this memory. It's something that we'll have forever so that when they get together 10 years from now, they'll be the ones that not only made it to a bowl game, won a bowl game, and changed the future of Kent State football um, because of the hard work that they put in and the love that they have for one another. Coach, I mean, the common theme after the game was players saying they'll know who we are now. So kind of was that the motivation all throughout the season, and will they know who you are now? Um. <laughs> You know, uh, we talked a lot about respect early on in the year, 
And uh, it's kind of a hard thing to define. Um, but we talked about it before the Kennesaw State games where if you respect someone or you respect something, you hold that in high regard. It's something that I heard Pete Carroll say in a podcast that my wife shared with me, and I shared that with the kids. And um, from day one, we just wanted to earn a little bit of respect. Um, felt like we had done that in Northeast Ohio with our community and with our school. Felt like we had done that in the conference through the past couple of years. And uh, now we had an opportunity being the only game on a prime time Friday night lights at a first class bowl down here at the Tropical Smoothie Cafe Frisco Bowl to, uh, to showcase what these kids are capable of doing. And hopefully now the college football landscape, when they see that flash K that we rock so proudly tonight, that they'll hold that flash K in high regard and know what it means when we're coming to town. Now this question is for both of the players. Uh, it's not often when you see a group of five program play three Power Five uh, teams. Do you think that those games early on in the season prepared you for this moment? Uh, I mean, I think it does a good job, kind of showing us where we're at, and it shows kind of uh, builds a little confidence, I guess you could say, when we were able to have some success and things like that against some of those schools. And it just shows that we can, I mean, we can hang with the, with the best when we're right. And it just kind of raises our uh, level of competitiveness and kind of. Really makes us focus on details and things like that because I mean when you're playing schools like that you have to really be razor sharp. And whenever you make a mistake, they're going to they're going to make you pay. So I mean it helps us kind of raise our level of play and things like that. And I mean they're just great opportunities that we look forward to. Um, all 12 games of the season, there's like there's no doubt in my mind that we can win each game, and um, it shows like the first half of Auburn. There was there was no way there was no doubt in my mind that we weren't going to win that game. I mean, and it got ugly at the end, but um, we stuck together even when in those tough times. And uh, I think I don't even I don't even think those those games make us those those games in in the MAC where we lose by two points and seven points when we know we could have won the game, and then we come back and we're down 21 with 10 minutes left, and we come back and win the game, and we finish off the season over 500. Uh, those are the games that make us. Uh, I don't think the the Power five schools make us at all. Coach, you said in your opening statement about the seniors and how much they meant to you, but can you talk about that more? And like, it's almost like before you've gotten emotional about the seniors sticking with you when you got here. So being able to reward them now. <laughs> um, I'll do my best, but I'll probably get emotional again talking about them. So um, it, it, it's, a, it's a special group of kids. You know, without, without these guys, without the seniors, without the players, I'm just a tall, balding, bearded guy who loves football. You know, but because <laughs> – I mean, um, but because of them, I got to be a coach. Um, and w with, with any good team, any great team, y you got to have player leadership. And our seniors did that for us. A significant number of our seniors are our single-digit guys, are our golden standard guys. And again, they weren't guys that, that we recruited. So a lot of people said, you know, hey, you're not, you're not one of Coach Lou's guys. You know, but a lot of outsiders said that these guys aren't my guys. I didn't recruit them. But I chose to come coach them. And um, they bought in and they believed in what we were saying. And no one did that more than our senior class. And um, because of that, we had some, some senior leadership. And we had an opportunity to be a really special team. And the kids worked their tails off. And uh, man, I'm going to miss those kids. Uh, I, I truly am. Um, and they got my number. And no matter where they go, they know that they'll be able to get in touch with me the way all my kids can. And uh, I love those guys. Dustin, when the season started, could you have a vision? envision this, I mean, for yourself, winning offensive MVP of a bowl game? Uh, I mean, as a competitor, you always try to set the bar high and things like that for yourself and just really set goals to go out and get and things like that. And I mean, if you sell yourself short, that's you're never really going to accomplish anything. So mindset wise, early on in the year, I mean, you obviously the goals are the same as the team, MAC championship, win a bowl in a game and all that stuff. I mean, the personal accolades like MVP and things like that were never really a part of it. But I mean, like I said, we always set our bar high with the cha championships in mind. So I mean, that's kind of where my head is when I was the backup or starter. Third string, it doesn't I mean it doesn't really matter. What's it like to end your career this way, having the best game of your, se of uh, your season? I know it's, it says that I'm a senior, but it's not my last year. So we're we're going to go into year three and and do some crazy things. But uh, just to end this season 
over 500. I literally tweeted that uh, probably like week three um, is to get over 500, and that's that's all it's about. I mean, getting a winning season and, and getting the culture started is what it's all about. Any other questions for our student athletes or Coach Lewis? I got one. <laughs> <laughs> Feels good to be a winner. Great. <anything else? All right, congratulations, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank, thank, thank you. you.